we are going to be taking a look at Unicorn Overlord, the latest in a series of names that hurt the ears, names such as Octopath Traveler, Triangle Strategy, horrifying, horrifying names. Well, they're not, they're not that bad. Honestly, Unicorn Overlords, it's not terrible. Uh, we're looking at a a game coming out from two developers that I really like, Atlas and Vanillaware. Um, Vanillaware is bringing the heavy art game that they've got from their experiences with uh, games such as, you know, Muramasa, uh, Grim Grimoire, and uh, Dragon's Crown. The one game that I really want to say is not coming to mind, <laughs> but we're going to be taking a look at this logo again in a minute uh, and talking about it, but first we're going to look at, I think this is the the Japanese um, version of the their website, which is funny because it is still mostly in English, so I guess you can change it up here, so maybe that's why. It's just set to English, but I just really like looking at websites. A lot of a lot of these websites, I feel like they don't get looked at at all. They're they're actually pretty gorgeous. Like look at this. If you don't know what Unicorn Overlord is, here's an explanation for you. Um, oh yeah, Thirteen Sentinels, Aegis Rim, Odin Sphere. Those are two of their bigger games. Odin Sphere, just beautiful art style, uh, especially in the the latest version of it. Unicorn Overlord is basically a tactical RPG uh, along the lines of something like an ogre battle. It seems more towards, uh, less towards like tactics ogre, more towards ogre battle 64, which um, the difference in those, one of them is just a tactical, a tactical grid sort of thing, like Final Fantasy Tactics, those sorts of games. Whereas ogre battle Ogre Battle has this more open style where you're, it's a real time, but the, the actual battles when you clash are partially gridded, but more of just like a clash of units. So you can kind of see those units here. There's the, the grid, you can have up to six units maybe, but most of these don't have six. So I'm not sure if there's a limit, maybe the limits change depending on stats or something like that, but have yet to see, but there's a little view of that. Uh, so then when you actually clash, it gets into this more 2D, really beautiful art style sort of thing. And I'll be showing a bit of the trailer to get a better look at that later. There's also going to be a lot of um, big story big big story uh that almost sounds eastern european um big story moments like 60 i think characters that that are recruitable depending on choices that you make things that you do in the game and then we have food she's filled steak hash whatever that is sounds good i would eat it um i'll talk about that in a minute because that actually has to do with other things. Is this going to load or is this not going to load? We'll see. I believe that means no. So let me just refresh. That was pretty cool. All right. Not going to lie. But here we have a bit of the, the early story. It's going to be the tale of a kingdom that is falling and then an evil emperor evil empire rises from the ashes of that kingdom. It's, it seems like a very classic story. It's like the the whole Star Wars thing where you got the rebels versus the empire. You're on the side of the rebels. The fallen prince um, who finds a magical ring. And we have that prince right here. Elaine. Again, here's that beautiful art style. Uh, some of the moments in the game, early moments. Um, I think this, if I click it, you can see some of the animations 
So that is a battle animation slashing attack. So that's pretty cool. You can get a look at some of the other characters. We've got Scarlet, Lex, Joseph. This is um, the Queen. So this is this character's mother. I'm not sure how much we're going to be seeing of her. Uh, it looks like that particular part of the game isn't going to last too long. Oh, I can't even click on it. Let's see that cool animation again. Here we go. All right, so click on that. Um, here's the queen. She does have a battle animation, though, so I don't know what that means, whether she's going to be uh, recruitable. Probably not. It seems like, if I had to guess, she's dead. <laughs> she is super dead, but I guess we'll see. Who knows? Maybe she survives the the first 10 minutes of the game. Um so here is a bit of the overworld system. This is what it's going to look like moving around exploring. This is one of the things that I've always thought was sad was kind of like missing from tactical RPGs is an overworld map where you're moving around in the style of like JRPGs. Uh, a lot of the tactical RPGs are more of the Fire Emblem style where it's like half visual novel, half battles. I don't like that. I That's something that I've always disliked um, and something that's kept me away from a lot of Fire Emblem games because I grew up playing Shining Force, which was totally different. It was just a JRPG with a tactical RPG system attached to it. So that's something I love. I, I love the idea of bringing some of that back. You know, it's not exactly that, but some of it looks like that so that has me excited and interested although i i loved tactics ogre still i love final fantasy tactics still but i do wish there there was more like exploration and why not you know you build these beautiful worlds why not let me explore them that's all i want just a little bit of exploration uh this for some reason this website is half loading, half not loading. Let me see if I can get this to open up. Or are we going to see that cool animation again? Here we go. Third time's the charm. All right, it worked. And that one down there worked. So uh, so here's a bit of that system. Let's see if I can get a bit more of a high resolution so we can take a, a look at it. So this looks like something you'd see in Ogre Battle 64, where you'd have single units that are, you know, leveling up. They they have full stats, they have full everything, but then you put them into these units. Um, it looks like you can do five. Let's see if maybe there are any different ones. So this one's four out of four, three out of three. I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe depending on what kind of units you use, maybe mounted units are going to take up a bit more space. That would make sense. Maybe not. Um, there are also going to be bigger units that I've seen. So things like griffin riders and things of that nature. Let's just let this play out. Um, here, here we have this dragon rider. It looks like wyvern rider of some sort. Uh, an angel, maybe a couple beast men. So it, there's a lot of variants. It has me wondering, you know, what are the different classes going to be? Um, you can kind of get a look at that down here at the bottom. It seems like there's going to be a class system of some sort. So are we going to have like a tiered, um, tiered ranking up system, something like Langrisser, where you start with one level of your character is just a soldier, moves up to a lord, moves up to a high lord. I hope that's the sort of system that we're going to be getting, but I guess we'll see. See what this kind of opens up to. And actually, you can see here, uh, we have Were Fox and then Lord, and then Fighter. So it does look like there's going to be some sort of system like that. But how much depth that's going to have? I mean, it's Atlas, and this looks like a pretty... Um, pretty similar to that 
sort of ogre battle style. So I assume there's going to be that sort of ranked leveling up system. We'll see, though. They're already level 10. Um, feather staff, so that seems to be like a angel-specific class. Hoplite. So there's a lot of variants. There's even elves, so elven archers. Uh, it's cut off a little bit by the YouTube thing, but that's all right. All right, so um, I'm sure we'll be learning more about that in the future. They're just kind of trickling out different, um, different things. So this is the battlefields. They seem to be more of stages. So I think you know, um, again, bringing back the the linguister idea, or maybe even you know any tactical RPG where it's going to have stages. Um, so this this seems like it's going to be separate from the more overworld map sorts of. Uh, maps where this is going to be very specific for battles. Uh, just let this play. So you can kind of see how the combat works. You move in real time and then you clash and then battles start. That system, I like it a lot actually. it's uh, It works really well. Um, another game that did that for like single units was uh, Ground Lancer. And I was... There's something cool about that. Um, I like both styles of systems, but it's nice to get a bit of vari variance. So here is that 2D... Um, the 2D battles after the clashes. Uh, that play out. I have different abilities... Guaranteed crits, so you have some characters that buff other characters up, and then they attack. Um, so here you can see the the main character is actually on a horse now. Uh, that's something that I saw even on the overworld map sections. So at some point your character is getting a horse. I don't know if that's going to be story related, if that's going to be just class related. Maybe your character's class changes over time. Um, and maybe there's a class tree, possibly, or maybe it's just set in stone. Either way, your character gets a horse at some point, which is pretty cool. Difficulty levels, obviously, they're going to be having that. Um, casual, tactical, and expert, but then it says sweet, normal, and hard. Sweet? <laughs> That's a very strange difficulty. Um, then we have online modes there's gonna be like some sort of arena coliseum sort of thing where you're fighting against um other people so you can kind of do pvp stuff um pvp battles against other players units assemble your best team and aim for the top so it sounds like there's gonna be some sort of ranking system there which is cool probably not really my thing but i mean it's there i'll probably try it out Let's take a look at this. I had this article pulled up because this is a more recent thing. They uh, unveiled a thing called the Right of Covenant. And if we go back to this page, we have the, the two rings. Um, and that's important because apparently your character doesn't only get the one ring. Your character gets two rings. Um, and the the second ring you are giving to one of the characters in the game. Uh, so there's some sort of marriage mechanic. Um, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Uh, but it says here, it can be given to a significant other, which will engage him and his partner into the Rite of Covenant. Uh, there are many characters that can receive the ring of the Maiden, but characters, uh, players can choose one and only one special someone to give it to. So... There's going to be some sort of thing with that, um, where your character is going to be marrying. What the significance of that is, not sure yet. Um, there have been a lot of different games that have done this in different styles. Uh, the Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War, I think it did this whole thing where you marry a character and then there's a second generation. Will it do that? 
I would guess probably not, but still, it's cool to have that. I, I like the social systems in these games because it fleshes out the world a bit. Uh, romance is just a thing that humans do, so um, it gives it a bit more, just a bit more, I don't know, something. <laughs> it gives it a bit of something. Uh, you also have report, so you can make friends with uh, the characters that you're getting. Again, 60 different characters, so how many characters are going to be marryable? I don't know. Can you marry that fox lady? <laughs> I don't know. Um, there are a lot of questions here. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people have, so we'll see where that goes. Then we have rapport bonus, so depending on what rapport level you have with these characters, you're going to increase stats. Something that people that don't really care about the social system, but do care about care about stats, they're probably going to want to do that. Um, so here is the taverns. It's uh, a different way to build rapport. Uh, that brings back this beautiful food that we saw earlier. Um, this is the food that your characters are going to be eating while they build rapport with each other. Uh, if I was able to eat that food, I would gain rapport as well. Um, I don't know how to exit out of this. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. <laughs> All right. It looks like it just opened a new page. All right. Um, well, you can also give gifts. Uh, just the things you would expect. The Ring of the Unicorn held by Elaine has a counterpart, the Ring of the Maiden. So that is what we saw with the two rings, uh, depending on their rapport level. It makes me wonder, are they going to reject you? <laughs> like, is there going to be a whole rejection sequence if you get rejected? That'd be hilarious. You get this, this whole scene down here where you're like at a shrine and you're standing there and you're like, oh, I would love to marry you. And they're like, nah, nah, bro. Get off, get on my face. That would be hilarious. Um, I think this talks a bit more about field quests. So there's going to be questings, subquests, um, field quests, and liberation quests. So there's a bunch of different quest types depending on what you want to do. I, I'm assuming that some of them are optional. Uh, and then main quests are probably not optional, right? That's how I assume it works. There's also going to be mining. Uh, I think that is shown off in one of these trailers. Take a quick look. This trailer here shows a bit of the mining. Let me just go through it a little bit. The art style is just insane. Um, I don't know if I can find the the mining or not, but yeah. So there's gonna be a mining mini game of some sort. I assume there's gonna be other mini games, uh, in the game as well. But most of the game is gonna be spent trying to. Oh, here it is. So that um, get a look at that. So here's the mining, and. It's going to be mining for treasure. Let's get a, a good slowdown on that. Get a good slowdown on the shaking of the food. So realistic. Um, double check, make sure it's 1080. Oh yeah, there, there's some sort of mining system. It almost looks like a... Um, what's it called? The smacking... Um, guinea pigs with the hammer. I, I can't remember what that's called. It, it almost reminds me of that. Um, or like Secret Inn, where it had all the different mini-games that you would do. I'm not sure how in-depth mining is going to be, but I'm down. Um, mini-games are always cool. You, It's probably like not something that you need to do either. Uh, there's also going to be a town rebuilding of some sort, so... Uh, what level of town we're building, I'm not sure, but it looks like you're going to be stationing your allies, allies at different 
garrisons in towns and they'll be building towns up. So how that mechanic's gonna work, I guess we'll see, but sounds cool. Reminds me a lot of kind of a mix mixture of different um different games that I've played before, like some little elements of Ogre Battle 64 mixed in with some elements from these strategy games that I've played before. Um, there's also, you know, this beautiful art style. The game looks great. It's it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. And Atlas and Vanillaware, didn't think I'd ever see them smash together to create something, but here we are. Uh, it's going to be out in March 28th, 2024, for all of these different systems that you can see on the screen. It's Nintendo Switch. PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X. It doesn't look like it's going to be on PC, which is a shame, as that is where I would like to buy it, but maybe in the future. Um, so that is something to think about, I guess, if you don't have one of those systems. Well, <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be getting the PS5 version because I have a PS5, and it's going to look gorgeous on that. Um, yeah, this is Unicorn Overlord. Looks like a great game. And I guess we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So far, looking great. 